Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Man, oh man. Before we get into the actual nitty gritty of the video, I want to get something off my chest first and foremost. And don't worry, it isn't, it isn't getting my shirt off. <laughs> but I wanted, in all seriousness, there is something that I would like at some point. Remember in Salford when I took the stage, gave that speech while sharing a platform with Tommy Robinson? Do you know what would please me? Next time there's a major protest organized by Tommy Robinson, nothing would please me more than to be able to give a proper, passionate, full-on speech on that stage. I'm not entitled to anything, let me be clear, but you know what? It would really make my fucking day and probably the next few years. I wanna be known as that person who is not going to mince his words, who is not gonna sugarcoat a motherfucking thing and is gonna say it exactly how it is. And without further amount ado, let's do this. So first and foremost, Kier the Traitor Starmer's rating, which was already abysmally low at minus 16, has gone down like a further four or five points, leaving Kier the Traitor Starmer at minus 21. And how sad is it that even the Tories are beginning to beat Labour. Another council manages to succeed over Labour. But there is something else I need to talk about rather than just councils, and that is the winter fuel payment. I've already made a point pretty clear about how I feel about this shit, how they can take away money from pensioners to basically give it to illegal immigrants, almost all of which have no legal or human right to be here, the migrants, not the pensioners. So I suppose at this point, if you ask them if you want to stay in the country, I bet the pensioners would still fuck off to another country. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is Keir the traitor Starmer is doing everything he can to take the money from those who desperately need it to pay those who certainly don't deserve it. And there's actually an opposition now to this. There is actually an opposition, mostly led by Labour, unfortunately, but there is an opposition nonetheless against Keir the traitor Starmer and this notion of stealing money from the elderly. Now Keir the Sheriff of Nottingham, sorry, Keir the traitor Starmer, or maybe that's another accolade I can add to him, but Keir the traitor Starmer is hell-bent on adding the Sheriff of Nottingham, or in this case the Sheriff of Parliament, to his accolades because he has done everything he can to avoid these protests, uh, sorry, the I've got the protest on my fucking mind now, god damn it. Uh, he's trying to avoid the motion. He's trying to avoid debating it because he knows damn well Mr. Traitor Starmer is fully in the wrong trying to take away money from the pensioners. Like, as I said, he is the literal antithesis of Robin Hood, where Robin Hood stole from the rich to give to the poor. Clear the Traitor Starmer is stealing from potentially the poor, but certainly the most vulnerable, to basically give to illegals who don't deserve it, or themselves. And the fuckers are using the excuse, oh, but there's a 22 billion pound black hole. Yeah, which you lot fucking created. And you know what? We wouldn't be in this fucking mess if Gordon the bully and blundering Brown hadn't sold all our gold at a fraction of its market value. We wouldn't be in this mess if Tony the war criminal Blair hadn't used our money to fund a false war in Iraq over WMDs. We wouldn't be in this mess if we weren't paying into the system to have our taxpayer money pissed up the wall by dickheads in the houses of treachery. I mean parliament. Or maybe I was right first time. The same people who go out with their champagne sipping friends and party during lockdown while we're not allowed to see our fucking families. Yeah, those champagne socialist dickheads. These people who are doing this have no respect for ordinary working class people. And even if you could say that maybe he's right to take some of that money, let's say for the sake of the fact he is right to do it. I ask you this question, is it right that the elderly should have to suffer 
after putting in so much to this country. I beg the question, and I think the answer everyone is going to give, including myself, is a big, resounding no. Why should the elderly suffer for the fuck-ups of our dickheads in Parliament? Please tell me. I can't wait to hear what Jem, Sadiq Khan, or Keir the Traitor Starmer has to say on this shit. What happened to the mantra of respecting your elders? Oh, but when it comes down to Keir the Traitor Starmer and tiny Cocosaurus Rex, sorry, I mean Jimmy Savile, Oh, there's, there's Keir the traitor Starmer, ready to go full defense of him. But of course the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me, it doesn't suit the narrative. That's how much of a sorry state this country is in. We have politicians more interested in protecting pedophiles and grooming gangs rather than serve its own people. We have politicians that would rather steal from the elderly's winter fuel payment to house illegal immigrants that have no legal or human right to be here. We are sick to death of people being put in hotels at the taxpayer's expense. I would say that Keir the Traitor Starmer is a clown, but then that would be a genuine offence to any genuine clowns out there who at least entertain some small children. No, what Keir the Traitor Starmer is, is a charlatan. He is a fucking fraud. He is a traitor. He is a sectarianist bastard. And most importantly, Keir the Traitor Starmer is an unequivocal fascist. And while I highly doubt this video will get up to 75,000 views, like my police officer video where thousands of officers were resigning voluntarily, I reckon this will definitely get Keir the Traitor Starmer's attention. Because after all, his ego's gonna be bruised. The amount of roastings I've given that fucker. Keir the Traitor Starmer is not going to like being called a fascist, a dictator, I mean tater. Or again, maybe I was right first time. He is not gonna like being called a sectarianist bastard. He is not going to like being called a fascist. At the end of the day, though, that is what Keir is. Keir, the traitor Starmer, is a fascist, a sectarian, he is a charlatan, and he is a fraud. He told us he was going to be a man of the working class people. Do you see him supporting the working class now? He is about as supportive to the working class people as a wet noodle. Like I said, more interested in protecting tiny Cocosaurus Rex and his wet noodle, if you catch my drift. He's more interested in getting in thousands, hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants that don't have a right to be here. Bearing in mind, if they truly wanted safety, they would have claimed it in the first safe country they got to. But look what they've done, not just to our country in London, They've turned Blackpool into an Islamic town. They have turned Paris into a third world shithole because they don't respect anyone. These savages, these foreign invaders, these aliens who invade other countries to seek only to serve themselves rather than integrate with society. And Keir the traitor Starmer wonders why British people are fed up when there are multiple attackers now, migrants, some of these people, who are going out of their way and stabbing kids to death. Speaking of kids to death, what about the five kids who ended up stabbing an Indian man to death? I wonder why their names haven't been put out. I wonder why that they are being protected. I wonder why they're being released without charge. I wonder. Yeah, that's right, I'm defending an Indian man. Just to prove, once again, a point that I don't care what your colour or creed or country, anybody who goes out and kills anyone, whether they be old or young, fat or thin, whether they be native or foreign, I have a big problem with that. 
but the police have let these children go. And I find that reprehensible. When will Keir the traitor Starmer actually address the real issues? When will he address the elephant in the room? Illegal immigration. When will he address Islam? An intolerant fucking death cult. Where everyone says they're a moderate Muslim. But the thing is, if these people were really moderate, do you think it would be unreasonable for them to call out their extremist brothers and sisters. I know they would expect us to do the same if it was Christians that were being extreme. They would expect us to call out genuine far-right people if they were plotting terrorism, like, I don't know, plotting to bomb up the bomb parliament or blow up the Houses of Commons. They would expect us to call that shit out. Likewise, it should stand to reason that we expect these Muslims, moderate or no, to call out their extremist brethren? Or am I just living in that faraway planet called the real world? Am I thinking of that rare thing too much called common sense? Like, I want to know, am I too busy living in the real world to want to accept that this shit is happening? Am I too unreasonable to request that Keir the traitor Starmer actually does his civic duty and actually protect all forms of British people, not just one religious section known as Islam? Am I? Am I too crazy to think that? And while I accept he isn't a Muslim himself, Keir the traitor Starmer, he is as close to being a sectarianist bastard as he can actually be. He may as well have a full hijab on himself. Unfortunately, we have people who are more interested in protecting the religion of peace than protecting the whole country, which is what they're supposed to be doing. Now, speaking a bit more about these migrants, if I get myself tucked in a bit more, there are 12 migrants that drowned in one of the latest crossings, to which my literal reaction was, oh no, anyway, because I don't care about them, quite frankly. Yes, it's a tragedy that people have died, but I'm not gonna shed a tear over them, quite frankly, because if they're willing to pay the people smugglers to come over to this country in the first place, illegally, I might add, then why are they our problem? Hmm? Why the fuck are they our problem? Now, if it was filled with women and children, then yeah, I could understand having a humanitarian need to house these people. However, the vast majority of the people that are coming overseas are not women and children. They're fighting age men who are seeking their fortune. And as I've said before, I don't blame these people for wanting to seek the absolute best country in the world to basically sponge off of and or commit crimes while continuing their intolerant ideologies. I'd probably do the same if I was in their shoes. Let me give you something. Romanians, when they first started coming over, bear in mind some of these people were getting paid nine, well, a ninth of what they were getting paid back in their own country, of course they're going to come over to Britain, because that's going to basically pay them over nearly tenfold. So yeah, I can understand it from that perspective. I can understand that they would want to come over here to get much more money that they would get back in their home country. But here's the thing. At least a lot of these Romanians and a lot of the Polish people, for example, are coming over here with the intent to integrate with society, not subjugate it like Islam and a lot of these migrants from their third world shitholes are trying to do. They may not like me saying it like this. Hell, I bet there are people on the bus right now who probably want to rip my throat out. But here's the thing, we're no longer living in a, in a society where we can keep quiet anymore. We no longer live in a place where we can be like, yeah, you know what, I'll save this for when I get home, or I'll save this for when I'm in somewhere private. We can't do that anymore, because 
if we continue like this, as I've said in one of my other videos, I wouldn't trust Keir the traitor Starmer with 10 seconds, let alone 10 fucking years, which is what he's asking British people to have faith in him for. Like, the only thing I'd give him 10 years for is maybe potential life expectancy before he dies of a heart attack from all the stress he's suffering from after he leaves Parliament. Now, let me be absolutely clear. I'm not wishing for harm or death on Keir the traitor Starmer because I do not condone violence. I do not condone breaking the law. But as I said, what I will condone is, for example, turn your back on the police if they ask for your help because the two-tier police are clearly more interested in protecting the sectarianist bastard, Keir the traitor Starmer, and of course the religion of Islam, while persecuting patriots who post memes on the internet, fire water pistols at the police, or growl at a dog. They are going to release the rapists and the killers from the prisons to make room for the so-called far-right. They're doing it as we speak. Martuzzi is covering it as well. And I'll probably be linking his video in the description below as well. Because this needs to be exposed. The fact that Keir the Traitor Starmer is as serious as a heart attack when it comes down to removing all the rapists and all the murderers and all that shit, just so that the supposed far right aka concerned patriots and parents can be jailed and you know what i'm going to bring this back to alex belfield because i've been a bit yo-yo-y with this guy i don't agree with his stalking of bbc people but a lot of some of the things he said about covid for example he was correct about that and I will say this, it is fundamentally wrong that Alex Belfield is jailed, or was being jailed, for five and a half years in prison, while we have a man who ran over a child, dragged them a hundred feet underneath their van. He mistook it for a traffic cone, he says. He gets let off without charges. Or those kids that I mentioned that murdered that 80-year-old Indian man. They're getting released without charge. But Alex Belfield is jailed for five and a half years just for simple stalking. I believe it was called. Or was it subtle stalking? But I, the, the point I'm trying to make is these sentences and the policing and the justice system and the government, it's all two-tiered. And it is completely imbalanced and disproportional to the sentences. In America, if you kill someone, life means life. You get life for taking a life. But here in the UK, you can literally, as I said, you can run over children. And you won't even be charged. You could be someone with child porn on your phone or your computer or what have you. And you can get less time than somebody who's stalking less time, potentially, than somebody who posts a meme on the internet. I may not be defending Alex Belfield that much anymore, because I think the stalking is wrong, but I will defend him on this, and I will say that his five and a half years is completely disproportionate compared to some of these people who are committing the most horrific crimes, who are basically getting nothing more than a slap on the wrist, which is something, of course, the mainstream media are not going to want to tell you. Why is it we have incompetent politicians over the last 20 to 30 fucking years that are completely incapable of overhauling the police and the justice system? Why is it that they still feel the need to steal from the taxpayers to steal from the elderly's winter fuel payment just so they can house illegal immigrants that, as I said, and will keep saying until I'm blue in the face if necessary, that have no legal or human right to be here. Why can't we have common sense politics? 
that if you come over to this country illegally, you will be kicked out of our country and blacklisted and sent straight back to your country of origin. Because how you deal with the migrant crisis, or the illegal immigrant crisis as it's becoming, is you don't give them incentives to come here, you decentivize them from wanting to make the effort to come here. All those people who are paying for seats on a dinghy that is barely seaworthy, if we send the strong message, if you come by this route, you'll be sent straight back, they won't pay the people smugglers. You can go ahead, like I believe one uh, of my uh, people smuggler was killed in France, where one of the people smugglers got killed. That's not going to solve anything. That just removes one person and they can easily replace them. They're like ants. You kill one, ten more take their place. How you stop this is you say to the people, you are not welcome here if you travel this way. And then they will stop paying them. Thank you. Once you start telling these people who are coming by the dinghies that you won't be welcome here, they'll stop paying because they know it won't be worth the effort. If they keep trying and keep getting sent back, that is the fastest way to stop this crisis. The fastest, unequivocally. Now, politicians, if they were smart, would know this. But of course, when we have people like Keir the Traitor Starmer, having smart thinking is likely as likely as winning the lottery. Keir the Traitor Starmer will not do this because at the end of the day, he needs these illegal immigrants and the Muslim vote to keep himself in power. Though at the rate he's going, he'll be lucky if he lasts six months, let alone 10 years. But that's how you deal with this. And if somebody like me can think of the solution, if somebody like Nigel Farage can think of that solution, if people like Tommy Robinson can come up with that solution, then surely Keir the Traitor Starmer can. Keir the Traitor Starmer needs to stop living in his little utopian bubble and grab his tiny little bollocks, no matter how small they are and how much it might hurt, and he needs to start making tough decisions if he wants any chance of staying as our Prime Minister. And frankly, I hope he doesn't, because the man's a traitor through and through. But if he actually wanted to make a change, the first thing I would do in his shoes, stop the boats. Stop the boats, close the borders. Stop all migration into the country. Once the borders are closed, I then look through the prison system. I find any Islamic prisoners and I take out the trash, metaphorically speaking. I put them on a ship, I send them straight back to the third world shitholes that their religions come from. And we give them a strict warning. If any of them try to come back, we shoot to kill. Because we don't want terrorists and people intolerant of the West in our society. And if the moderate Muslims are actually considerate enough to realize the threat that Islam is, they will call these people out. But the cold bit of truth is, they sadly won't. Or at least the vast majority of them won't. Right, I'm pulling out all the stops here. I really mean that. I am pulling out all the fucking stops here. Flour. Eggs. Milk. I'm having pancakes tonight. And I'm having all of them. Fucking sue me. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that a lot of these people who claim to be moderate sadly will not call these people out. If the moderate Muslims actually had the balls, whether up here or down there, or in my case both, with these banging set of tits, these Muslims, I reckon, would be a lot more welcome here if they called out their extremist brethren. But sadly, what we see more often than not is those people who are moderate and they choose to just sit there and do nothing. They choose to speak, see and hear no evil. Just like our police, as far as Rotherham was concerned. 
Telford, Rochdale, Manchester, Liverpool, the grooming gangs, basically. Like I said earlier in the video, they would expect us to call out their ex or our extremist brethren. And I'll tell you right now, I'd be giving a good fucking bonk over the head. I don't know if that'll deter them, but it might need a like a stroke number one. It might leave a nice lump on their head. Enough said. But Keir the traitor Starmer, if he's actually serious about wanting people to sign on to him for 10 years, more like longer than 10 seconds, that's what he needs to do. Stop the boats. Stop migration entirely for a time so that we can sort our own shit out. Deport all the Islamic prisoners we have, no matter what their crime. Send them straight back. Terrorists get sent to Guantanamo Bay. Islamic prisoners get sent to Islamic countries. Egypt, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Any of those will do, just to name a few of them. Because we don't want their intolerant ideology. And they, ironically, they'll call us all far right. They'll call us all racists. They'll call us all thugs. They'll call us all Nazis. But who are the real far right? I would say it's the death cult that kills apostates who turn away from their religion with death. I would say it's the people who go out of their way to get migrants at the top of a building and then push them off or stone them to death. I would say it's the ideology that says it's okay to take white women as sex slaves. I would say it's the ideology that thinks it's okay to kill the kafar, the kafir, the kafuffle, whatever you want to call them, all in the name of their prophet Muhammad or in the name of Allah and Alan's snack bar. I heard the snack bar is quite tasty though. Anyway, we need to start thinking about the ideology of Islam as the real far right, as the real threat to our country. And another step I'd take if I was Prime Minister, rather than Keir the traitor Starmer, I'd cut all foreign aid. All of it. I would go completely the whole hog on that shit. I would say, no more funding until we get our own debt sorted out. No more nonsense about We'll give you this, we'll give you that. How sad is it that we're literally giving our fucking money to, was it Sudan? While taking away money from the pensioners. That makes me physically sick. Physically sick. It is unacceptable on every fucking level. But the mainstream media won't tell you any of this. The mainstream media won't say that we're continuing to fu fund intolerant ideology. It might actually be Iran because they're the ones who are going after Israel. Now, frankly, I think we should be keeping our nose out of these wars because they have nothing to do with us. That being said, I need to clean this shit. Anyway, that being said, who are the real ones who are inciting hatred and violence, who are the ones who are wishing genocide on Jews? That would be, uh, that would be Hamas and pro plasticine and Palestine themselves. They scream out, oh, we're victims. Oh, look at what Israel's doing to us. They're bombing us. When they are the ones who are calling for genocide. Do you see the IDF calling for the genocide of Palestines? I'm sorry, what was that? I can't hear you. Oh, that's right, they're not. They're not calling for genocide because these guys have something called a moral compass. And I know people are gonna be in the comments like, well, Netanyahu is committing war crimes and all that shit. But here's the thing, Israel, clearly has their heads screwed on straight because they know how Islam works. These people and the pro-plasticine wankers 
are using psychological warfare. I've mentioned this a few times. Where basically, they are of the mindset of, let's use our own people as human shields. Let's use schools to hold our bases in, because who's going to want to bomb schools full of children? And they basically try to spin the yarn, which they can't even do a good enough job of, to basically say, look at them. They're bombing women and children. Look at them. They're blowing up schools. Look at them blowing up innocent civilians, even though we're the ones literally holding them out as fucking human meat shields. I'm going to do it again. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. You know the drill, folks, because say it with me. It doesn't suit the narrative. Now, don't expect a third one. I'm not doing that shit again. Anyway, they don't want to do it because it doesn't suit the narrative. Israel bad, Placidine good is their mantra, their mentality. Just like orange man bad, as far as Trump's concerned. I swear to God, there is some military-grade brain rot in our mainstream media, our police, our judiciary, and our entire establishment full of political pricks who stab people in the back as liberally as we take breath. Is it any wonder, Keir the Traitor Starmer, why your approval rating is at minus 21? When this is your crusade. Your crusade against the fake far right, concerned parents and patriots, who don't want their kids getting murdered, versus the real far right. The fascists and the dictators in Islam, that will impose Sharia law, that will treat women as second-class citizens, if not worse, that will treat homosexuals as people to be killed. Speaking of which, queers for Palestine, they got a very quick wake-up call from speakers of Islam, basically saying that they will be executed, they will be killed through their own laws against homosexuality. Which, again, the media won't tell you. And that they will wage holy war. Jihad. That's what the word really means. None of this nonsense what the media tries to say. Jihad has multiple meanings. No. Jihad has one fucking meaning that people are familiar with. And that is war. They are a warrior religion. Islam. Don't go and fucking tell us that they're a religion of peace. When these fuckers call for genocide, when they call for the slaying of apostates and the execution of gay people and treat women as objects, how it's okay to beat their wives. When are you going to tell the British people that, hmm? Do you hear that? Sound of silence. Ironically, the sound of silence is actually quite thunderous. I only wish there was a storm out there right now to further illustrate my point. But these are all things Keir the Traitor Starmer, or shall I use his full name, folks? Say it with me. Kim Jong Keir Stalin, the Traitor Starmer. How is it a man like that has got the gall to call concerned parents and patriots far right when he hasn't even got the balls to tell us what radical Islam truly is and that he is planning to protect Islam like the sectarianist bastard that he truly is. I don't know about you, but that makes Keir the Traitor Starmer the most dangerous man alive. It makes him a man who puts our very way of life at risk. Am I going to get arrested now, Keir the Traitor Starmer, for 
inflammatory language or anti-establishment rhetoric. Because that could be a broad opinion, folks. What could be considered anti-establishment? Disagreeing with the views of a traitorous prime minister? Not wanting your country to be invaded by third world barbarians who belong in the third world shitholes where their ideology belongs? Going against being political prisoners in Starmer's fucking dictatorship? I wonder. But one thing is for certain. He's in a catch-22. Much like he is with Tommy Robinson and Elon Musk. If any of us get arrested, he's not going to take away our voices. He's going to make them a hundred times louder. Because where one goes, we all go. We all protect one another. Whether it's online or in the streets. And when I was there on the 27th of July, my fucking God, did I see a lot of people. Over 75,000 people turned up to that protest. There to take on Keir the Traitor Starmer and his two-tier establishment, police and justice system and media. The people who are more interested in locking up people for speaking the truth rather than take action against the real person that should be hunted down. And I'll give you a clue. It's not Elon Musk. It's Keir the Traitor Starmer that needs to be hunted down and locked up on crimes of treason and violating human rights and then sued for defamation and slander by each indigenous Brit in this country that he has turned his back on and called far right. If he arrests me, I'll have a video prepared specifically so that if I do get arrested, that video will go up and then people will know the truth that what I've said is unequivocally true or as close to being true as it can possibly be. I will never stop fighting this fight. And as I said, I am not going to sugarcoat a motherfucking thing. I'm not going to mince my words. I am going to say it exactly how I see it. And I am not going to bullshit you, or I'll try my best not to. Keir the traitor Starmer, on the other hand, literally sells bullshit by the bucket load. Well, one day he's going to have so many spare buckets of shit. It will be no wonder that Parliament will stink of corruption.